Scripture will come from Romans 15, 1 through 6. And God's word says, With them that are strong, of the bear infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor, for he is good to edification. But even Christ place, even Christ pleases not himself, but it is written that the reproach of them that reproach the fell upon me. For whosoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning that we through a patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and, and constellation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. That you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's word is already blessed. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come today first to say thank you. Thank you for your many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you for this day, a day we've never seen before and we'll never see again. But you were so gracious that you allowed us to wake up and see this day. And Father, we thank you for protecting us all through the night while we slumbered and slept. We thank you for using us, giving us the use of all of our limbs. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the things that we take for granted. We can't thank you enough for what you've done for us, for you gave us your very best, your only begotten Son, who gave his life on Calvary that we would have a right to the tree of life. But we come as humble as we know how to say thank you, Lord, for you've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Father, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and trespasses that we've made against thee. For in our daily walk, we do sin against thee, O God, by omission or commission. But we realize that if we confess our sins unto you, you're faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. So, Father, we come now as humble servants, and we just pray that you would prepare us to be used by you and use us as you see fit. Not our will, but thy will be done. We ask your blessing upon our church family. We ask your blessing upon our pastor. We ask your blessing upon every church that's open in thy holy name. We ask your blessing upon the sick, the shut in, the homeless, the destitute, the bereaved, the heavy burden, the troubled heart the incarcerated, the confused mind, those who know you're not in the part in their sins. We ask a special blessing, O oh God, and that you would just prick their hearts, that they would open up and be glad to give themselves unto you. Father, we ask your blessing upon our nation. And even in these times of trouble, we know that everything will be all right, and we just trust in your word. You say, if we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, and all our ways acknowledge you, you shall direct our path. So we're just going to lean and depend on you, O oh God. Father, we say thank you for the things that you've done, the things that you're doing and the things that you will do. For we know that if we ask, it shall be given. And we see, we shall find. So we're just going to wait on the Lord. And these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Connected in Crisis Announcements for the week. New Giving Envelopes. The Giving Envelope booklets have arrived. Some were passed out during communion pickup. If you are giving by check or cash, this booklet is for you. Contact the church office at 210-226-3448 and we will get the booklet to you. Each booklet contains 100 envelopes that can be dropped off at the church or mailed. No second envelope is needed. Saba Hunger Walk. The San Antonio Baptist Association's annual Hunger Walk will be held on November the 7th. Funds collected are used to support food pantries like ours among member churches. We have 10 walker packages and are asking 10 members to collect $100 each for the walk. This will allow us to contribute $1,000 to a very worthy cause, especially in current times. Members are not asked to walk, but may do so at your choosing. However, that does not prevent us from making a kingdom difference by contributing to the cause. Thank you in advance for either being a virtual walker or contributing to the effort through one of our virtual walkers. Sister Loretta Biggs is POC for this effort. Her number is 210-226-3448. Early voting open now. If you have not voted yet, please strongly consider early voting. In Texas, we have until October 30th to vote. If you are disabled or cannot stand in line due to an injury or some other factor, you can request drive-through voting when you arrive at the precinct. Also, if you live in San Antonio, you can go to the precinct, then call 210-335-VOTE. That's 210-335-VOTE. 8683. The central phone bank will contact the precinct and they will bring a ballot to your car so you can vote from your car. Remember to have proper identification with you. Congratulations! Today, Brother Lee Hall and Sister Peggy Hall are celebrating 55 blessed years as husband and wife. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Congratulations. On October 30th, Deacon Ellis Love will celebrate his 93rd birthday. To God be the glory. Our scripture of the day. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16 and 33. These have been your announcements for the week. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. The voting process will be different this year in Bear County. Starting this November, Elections Administrator Jackie Kalanen with a show and tell of the new voting system. When you go to a vote center on election day, you will show your ID first. Here are the acceptable ID forms. 
A poll worker will then issue a personal ballot card and verify your precinct number. Important to note here, you can go to any polling site. It doesn't have to be in your precinct. The new system helps those hard of hearing with headphones and keypads. For those with poor vision, the system allows you to increase text size or change the colors. The next step, take your ballot card and slide it in. You'll be able to choose English or Spanish. Afterwards, make your selections for the candidates and propositions. The new system allows you to review and go back to change. Once you're finished, print it out and verify. Up next is the final step. You must go to the tabulator to insert your printed ballot to make it official.
such as these, I want to remind you to have faith in God, have faith in the Word of God, and to call on Him in the time of need. Romans 9 and 14 says, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills, nor him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, dear God. We come without shape, form, or fashion but we come to you with open hearts that your will be our will, that we would do what you would have us do. And before we dare ask for anything, dear God, we say thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our sleep last night and the waking of this morning. And Father God, we ask you to have compassion and mercy on those who did not wake and those who are bereaved this morning, those who are alone, those who are afraid, those who are disappointed and discouraged. Dear God, touch them in the way that they need to be touched. Each person stands in the need of prayer. Each person individually, you know their need, Father God, even better than they do. So we don't call out each person's name, each situation, but we call it all out to you because it is all about you. You control all, you see all, and we just ask you now to have mercy upon our souls, to forgive us of our sins, and to lead us to do what it is that you would have us do that would be glorifying to your name. Dear God, we ask you to bless our church family, 
all churches open in your name. We ask you to look over our country, Father God, right now who needs you more than we need a president, who needs you more than we need a senator or a mayor. We just ask you to watch over our country right now, Father God. And the people that are elected to lead it, let them be led by you, not by the whims of man, nor the greed of the world. Father, bless our children. Watch over them as they go to school. Watch over them as they travel back and forth on the buses, on the playgrounds. The situations they find them in now, Father God, help them find resilience that they can be successful in this environment and this new way of schooling. Father God, we just ask you to watch over us to keep us. Those who are sick, those who are in hospitals and behind prison walls. Father God, we again ask you to touch each person in the way that they need to be touched. We can sum up any prayer by simply saying all praise to you, all glory to you, and your will be done. Let our cup not pass from us, but let us drink like Jesus and have faith and trust in you and your word. Bless our pastor and the word that comes forth now that we may hear and not only be hearers but doers of the word. Father God, touch each person, each situation in the way that it needs to be touched, in the way that you would have it be touched and let us be accepting of your will. Let us be happy, let us be joyful that you saw fit to send your son for our salvation. Let us be ever so careful to conduct ourselves in a way that is worthy of it. We offer you all praise, all glory. We thank you for all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.
once again for this opportunity to come before your people, God, with your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for every opportunity, God, we get to lift up the name of your darling son, Jesus, in this land. Father, we pray for this world. We pray for all of your children uh, near and far, God. We pray for every soul that they may all come into the knowledge of Jesus the Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Now, oh God, if you would be so kind, we pray that you would bless your word, knowing that if it indeed goes out, it will not return unto you void. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today we will share from Matthew chapter 17. Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 17. Verse 1 reads, reading from the New King James Version. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like a sun, like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him, King James says, listen to him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. This morning we want to speak from the thought, a glimpse of hope. A glimpse of hope. This, this particular pericope, this setting, this offering from the scriptures finds our Lord and Savior selecting three of his 12 disciples and bringing them out into an experience that will help them to help all of them that would still help us today. What he showed to this group was not an act of favoritism. What he showed to this group was not uh, an act of uh, being proud or puffed up, but he gave them a glimpse of hope that they would need after he has physically departed. All of us, all of us, as we are dealing with life's situations every now and then can use a glimmer or a glimpse of hope. It seems like nothing is working out in my favor. Seems as though everything is going wrong. Seems like even when I try to do right, as the scriptures say, evil is always present with me. The challenge, the challenge becomes can I hold on to my faith in the midst of all of the adversary, adversity that I face? Can, can, I, can I hold on to God's unchanging hand no matter what hand I'm dealt on a daily basis? This is, this is good news here as I look at this text in the context that it is shared and in the context of what we're going through in this day and age, we're now in a moment where we are uncertain of our tomorrows. Truth be told, we are uncertain of today. We try to act like things are not happening and things are not getting to us, 
Realistically, all of us have a measure of humanity that causes us to ponder and reflect on what we're actually experiencing. But we are the temple of God. We, we are the place where people ought to be able to find hope. We are the people. We are the vessel. We are the ambassadors of God. And, and, and God's people are positioned, amen, to help a dying world in the matter of maintaining and having hope in the right one. That would be our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. That would be the Holy Spirit that's walking and comforting with us right now. That would be the Father who is, amen, receiving all of our pleas and cries. Thank God for God. They thank God that God is willing and able to handle every situation that comes across the human race. They thank God that God is able to, to, to look beyond decisions that mankind are making and choices and see uh, the greater good of his purpose for our souls. So it is incumbent upon us that we maintain hope in God in all situations, including the one that we face even now. Uh, the disciples' experiences here, so three things that I see that give us hope. Let me give them to you up front today, a little different. Uh, they experienced historical revelation. In this particular text, I see they experienced historical revelation. Secondly, secondly, they experienced physical limitations. Yes, they ran into some things that they couldn't handle. They experienced physical limitations. And thirdly, they experienced spiritual appreciation. Spiritual appreciation. Yes, yes, historical revelation, physical limitations, and spiritual appreciation. The Bible says they saw, they saw, they saw Moses and Elijah. We gloss across that as we study the Bible so often. Isn't it interesting that in that time, in that day and age, uh, there were no photographers that there were no uh, smartphones, there were no cameras to capture pictures. Yet the Bible says that they saw Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah had been dead years before they ever existed. So how then would they know that they're looking at Moses and Elijah? Only by the revelation of God could they know who they were seeing. Now they knew Jesus. They, they, they were able to determine and know exactly who Jesus is. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he went there with them. He led them there. And then he transfigured while there. And, and so they were able to see him transition to what he was to what he is in that particular setting. And then whatever he is appears two more persons, two more malefactors, two more men in their transfigured uh, persona, in their transfigured state. And, and, and so they were able to discern by spiritual revelation by God revealing it to them that these two men were Moses and Elijah. And, and, and Jesus leaves Peter, James, and John, and he's now carrying on a conversation uh, in his transfigured state with Moses and Elijah. Mo Moses and Elijah appear in the same state that Jesus is in. And whatever that state is, uh, one thing is a reality. That state did not cause them to have fear Be because, because they didn't panic when they saw what was going on. They were still able to talk to Jesus, talk to him, Peter. They were still able to communicate with Jesus. But, but, but Jesus transfiguring before their eyes, comforts them by way of removing any fear 
and he confirms the reality of the transfigured state. These are not ghosts that you guys are seeing. These are not figments of your imagination. 1 John 3 and 2 says, Beloved, now, we, now are we the sons of God, and it does not appear yet what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. However, God's transfigured, Jesus, our Lord and Savior's transfigured state will be upon his return, we shall be like him. Why, why, why Moses and Elijah? Have you thought about that? Why, why Moses and Elijah? Why, why not Adam, the first man? Why not Abraham, the father of many nations? Why, why not David, a man after God's own heart? Why not Isaiah, the great prophet? Why not Jonah, uh, 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 the, 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 the Christ figure that was used uh, with the ark to, to, to save mankind? Why not Joseph? Oh, the, the, the one with the coat of many colors who sacrificed himself through life that he may provide, a, a man, a, a way out for his people later on. Why, why not Samson, uh, who, who God endowed with great strength? He messed up, but he prayed one more time, and he was able to defeat the enemy one more time because of God's grace. Why not these or why not others? Why Moses? And Elijah. The Bible does not say, the Bible does not say, the only thing I can surmise is that Moses represents the law. God gave Moses the law. Yeah, yeah, the law come, came through us through Moses. And so, and so the, the, by, 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 by choosing Moses and revealing Moses, it connects our Messiah, it connects our Savior, it connects the Lord Jesus Christ, with that one who represents the law. Like, likewise, Elijah would represent the prophets. He was a prophet among prophets. So, so, so we have all of the prophecy and all of the law encaptured in two people, and Jesus meets and have a conversation with them on the Mount of Transfiguration. As if, as if historical Revelation is not enough by itself. That, that, that ought to be enough by itself. Just the reality that God showed them that, that he's still with them by bringing back someone that they had never seen in their lifetime, but yet he did it in such a way that they were able to recognize, amen, who they were. Historical revelation was provided to our brothers and sisters. Therefore, they remind us that we can have hope because these three saw and they told the story and the story is still being shared today and the word of God still reigns true today and every man and woman who believes in God can trust in the reality that God is able to reveal to us who he wants to reveal to us when he wants to reveal and we can have hope that there is a tomorrow because he's able to reach back into yesterday and show you something that you can relate to. What they saw was completely different from our flesh. But what they saw was not what they went up the mountain with. Uh, not only did they experience historical revelation, but they experienced physical limitations. Yeah, yeah, they were looking at three recognizable men. One by personal knowledge and two by divine revelation and historical picture painting in your mind. They, they knew them. They were not afraid of them, nor were they startled by them. It didn't shock them that they saw what they saw, but they had a great appreciation that what we're seeing is not what we are. What we're seeing is different. But whatever we're seeing, man, this is good. This, this, this is good. Peter said, Peter said, Lord, th this is good. Will you let us just, just build three tents?
tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter was in a state, and what he revealed by making that plea was that whatever I'm experiencing here now makes me want to worship. Because there's only three of us here with you, and you are with two others. So there are a total of six of us up here. But we want to make not three houses, not, 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 not three places uh, to eat, not three places to sit, not three places to sleep, but we want to make three tabernacles. We want to, you, whatever I'm feeling now, God, I just want to worship. It, it makes me want to praise you. It, it, it makes me want to give you the glory that you already have. It makes me want to honor you with all that I am. This is good. This feels good. I just want to stay here with you and worship you. As Peter was speaking, something else happened to impact and reveal their physical limitations. Yeah, yeah, the voice of the Father comes forth yet again with a familiar statement. Ah, uh, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The same thing he said in Matthew 3.17 when Jesus came up out of the water after John the baptizer had baptized him and, 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 and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, amen, down onto Jesus' shoulder. And the Father, speaking from glory, amen, said, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. This time, this, this time God, God's word adds two extra small statements. One, one, he says, I love him. That's important. You need to know that God loves God. So some, some, sometimes we can confuse ourselves and think that, well, uh, I love everybody, but I don't have time to love myself. Listen, God shows some pic paints a picture here, a Picasso of what a godly love ought to look like. Not only ought you ought to love others as yourself, you need to love yourself. Thank you, Lord. With all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, love God that way. Love yourself that way, too. And if you love yourself that way, then you would treat yourself like the temple of God and not like a shed or a shack on the corner, you would appreciate who you are. And you would want to have that same spirit that Peter portrayed when he said, let's build three tabernacles. But when they heard that voice, the Bible teaches that those three disciples, Peter, James, and John, fell to the ground. They fell to the ground with their face to the ground. And the Bible shows that they were afraid. So they transitioned, amen, from a mindset of, of, of jubilation and joy and praise when they heard the voice of God while seeing the transfigured state, amen, of the Son, they fell in fear. Yes, God would make you fear and tremble. Some things the physical body cannot handle. Some things are not meant for the physical body to be able to deal with. Recognition of this mortal, recognition that this mortal body must put on immortality and this corrupt must put on incorruption. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit corruption, inherit incorruption. Well, whatever, whatever state they're in, and once they hear two portions of it, once, once the auditory goes along with the visual, amen, now two senses, two of your five senses are involved in the reality of the next level of God. The people can't handle it. They drop down, trembling and afraid. Yes, we have physical limitations. So don't expect to experience all of God on this side. But you can certainly experience a lot of God on this side. You don't have to walk around in a pity party. 
You can walk around in a utopian state that makes you want to praise God, makes you want to build a spiritual tabernacle, amen, that God may dwell in until he transfigures you. This is a glimpse of hope, my brothers and sisters. This glimpse of hope allowed them to see and experience a historical revelation, a physical limitation, and then thirdly, a spiritual appreciation. Here it is, here it is, they're in a state of fear. Their face is to the ground. They're trembling, they're nervous, they're scared, they're afraid. Oh, when you're at your lowest state, when you're at your most helpless state, the Bible says Jesus touched them. Thank God for a touch from the Lord. Thank God for one who's willing to touch me before I can ask for help. Amen. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? They were not able to even utter those words, but the Bible says he touched them. He touched them. Yes, yes, he touched them. And not only did he touch them, he spoke to them. Thank God for, for a touch from the Lord. He, he spoke to them. He touched them. And then he said, get up. His first, his first, his first, his first words were clear and sure. Get up. Not fussing at him, not disgusted at him, not disappointed in him, but a command, an encouragement, a direction. Get up. Which way do I go? My head is to the ground. My eyes are in the dirt. Amen. My body is shaking with fear. What do I do? Get up can't do anything sometimes, my brothers and sisters, until you get up. And so I challenge you now, if you're down, if your face is to the ground, if you're in a spiritual tremble, it's time to get up. If you're lost, if you're anxious, if anxiety is overtaking you, if frustrations are overwhelming you, if situations are beyond your control, brothers and sisters, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Because you have been touched by God. The touch is calming. The touch is reassuring. The touch is personal. He touched them. It's three of them. He touched them. It didn't say he touched Peter and didn't touch James. It didn't say he touched James and didn't touch John. It didn't say he touched John and didn't touch Peter. He touched them. And he instruct, instructed them to get up, and as he is, after he instructed them to get up after his personal touch, he said, don't be afraid. My brothers and my sisters, whatever you're interpreting today that causes you to stray from the comfort and the peace that surpasses all understanding, the comfort that the Holy Spirit provides to you, I challenge you today, I encourage you today to accept the touch of Jesus the Christ and get up and take him at his word. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And the Bible says, as they looked up, thank you, Holy Spirit. Even before getting up, they looked up. I will look to the hill from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. They looked to the one who was speaking to them. They looked to the one who had touched them. And they only saw him. And they only saw him. At the end of the day, one who is always with you is your Lord, your Savior, Jesus the Christ. You can count on him. You can trust in him. You can depend on him. Get up. Don't be afraid. Look up. Behold him. A glimpse of glory is a reminder of what is to come. The touch is a reminder of the presence that's here. He's with you right now. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you. Lo, I'm with you always. Jesus the Christ is with you in the person of the Holy Spirit. I must go so your helper can come. 
your comforter came. Jesus is worthy. Thank God for our lives today. God, we thank you today for a glimpse of hope through your darling son, Jesus, who gave his life a little later than this on Calvary's mountain, conquered death to further validate the reality of his capability to transfigure, to re-transfigure, to touch us, to lead and guide us. Bless your people today. Thank you for your word. And thank you for the hope through your darling son, Jesus the Christ. Get up. And don't be afraid. May God bless you.